about you, but I love those times of life in between seasons, in between holidays, even in between the inclement weather when we have a little break of our daily routine. Those moments are so precious. And that's what we're going to talk about today, how to access the power of the moments in between. Before we get there, I just want to give you a couple of little updates. This is the end of season four, and that doesn't really mean anything. It's just kind of a way for me to categorize the seasons and the content of this podcast. But for those who've been listening, season four, primarily, I've been telling the story of the house and the energies and spirits there and what I've done to heal and transform that space as well as myself. So if you haven't listened to the whole season of season four, I encourage you to go back and do so. We've had a couple of really great guests also talking about communicating with spirit and turning the world of the unknown. And that is a nice bridge for our content today. Um, about the house, another quick update. Recently, I've been several times. I'm still doing some updates to the house and preparing it for short-term guests, Airbnb and that kind of thing. And the last time that I was there, my car has been driving fine. I get to the house and the car stalls and you know, that kind of thing happens, but it's interesting to me when these things happen, when I'm in relationship to that house, it's like kind of this constant reminder of the energies there that want me to stay or to stop or to somehow be affected. Uh, it took two full days. Luckily I was able to get the car going again and it wasn't that big of a problem, but I will still remark on the fact that the energy there is so lovely. I've had several people stay recently and the peacefulness in the bedroom is palpable. And I really do love going there now. And I just feel so, um, so connected to that place still. And it's really a treasure for me. So if you're interested in a healing retreat uh, for a small group or for yourself or looking for a place to get away for a weekend or something, I hope that you consider this magical place. Okay. So what I've been thinking about recently is how dependent we are on, on the day-to-day -day things that we need to do. I will admit I am a list maker. I have to make lists because I have so many different irons in the fire. If I don't, I forget what's going on, what day it is and what obligations I need to meet. So I think lists are a good thing, but I've been thinking about these lists in the sense of how they tether us and almost captivate us to a certain state of being. When we have a to-do list and we get to mark it off, there's a sense of gratification and satisfaction and like we're accomplishing things and it can feel really good, especially when we do have obligations. But I think it holds us to this place of fear and the fear is a very deep internal fear of being untethered. A lot of people have difficulty accessing their creative self or just creating anything in general. And that doesn't have to be an actual thing that we're creating, but just having a sense of creativity. Creativity and the energy of creativity requires kind of a flow state as does the mindset of abundance and receptivity, our intuition, the feminine energy, all of these things require a flow state. The same is true for our emotions. And so when we stay in this built-in routine of things that we have to do, it's easy for us to stay connected to a more masculine energy, a more get things done and feeling accomplished, seeing our worth external to us as a sense of validation, because I did this, I am good, or because I'm achieving all of these things, I have value. And so that space in between the to-do lists and the next thing that we want to do is really critical for most of us for our growth, for our expansion. The fear of being untethered is similar to the fear of freedom in our emotional state. You know, I write in my latest book, Overcoming Toxic Emotions, I write about emotional addiction and the vibration and frequency that we have that's attached to our wounded state, our lower frequency state, that's essentially attached to comfort for us in some sense. And we get addicted to that feeling. Most of us, at least the people that I've worked with and my friends and people I communicate with, myself included, would say that they want to be free of this pain and suffering. They want to be free of the self-sabotage. They don't want to be stuck. They don't want to be um, overly confined. They don't want to keep repeating negative patterns and behaviors in their life. And yet, 
there is a terror of the freedom that exists when we don't feel connected or tethered to what we know, to what we have given our power to, to assign value to ourselves, to accomplishing a million things a day. And so there is a space, an opportunity for us to be more in a flow state, to, to show up fully to the unknown, to that space that isn't connected to something else. And I understand the fear of it. I experienced that myself, especially every time that I have a big creative project to do. I will immediately go do all the things that I don't want to do, but you know, the technical obligations that I need to do, I'll get my taxes done. I'll clean the house. I'll wash the dog. Like I'll do all the things that need to be done in resistance to that feeling of being open and free and letting creativity and emotion flow out of me. An artist knows that to show up to a blank canvas, we have to kind of be in the space of that untethered energy so that we can allow the emotion and feeling and thought to express itself. And we are so unpracticed at that, that we revert right back to our constriction. We revert right back to our survival mode, to being tethered to whatever it is that somehow we can sense ourselves and safety and trust and value in at the moment. There's a great book. It's an older book. Many of you probably know it. It's called The Artist Way by Julia Cameron. And she suggests this practice of the morning pages, which is about unfiltered journal writing right when you wake up before you even have full consciousness. And it's a great practice that has helped many people, artists and people who don't identify as artists, to unload and kind of release some of the thoughts and feelings, dream states, um, emotions, what have you onto the page. And oftentimes there's something really creative and beautiful that comes out of that practice. That is a tangible way to practice this being in the untethered state. Even when I suggest for people, for my clients, for example, to have a journaling exercise or to do a vocal exercise. There is so much filtering that goes on because we want to stay connected to the identification of how we see ourselves and what makes us feel safe and validated. But when we can remove that filter and speak freely or write freely or express ourselves freely, there is a completely different energy that takes over our spirit and our body. And that energy is one of being in the midst of a higher frequency state in the midst of the unknown, in the midst of flow. And we are now able to freely travel down the river. This in-between state is so critical and so valuable for us to grow as human beings, not just to somehow be better, but to align ourselves more with what I think it is we actually want, that freedom of our soul and spirit to reveal itself the alignment with a higher connection to source, to, uh, to the collective consciousness, to our intuition. It's in those moments that we don't fill that we have access to the greatest wisdom. When we allow space in our day-to-day -to, -day to play, to be curious, to follow our natural desires, to listen to our body and our emotions and spirit, that is when we are truly alive. We step out of the mundane routine of getting through a day, of checking off all the boxes and into a place of organic, higher frequency, joyful, peaceful living. But we first have to address the fear of the feeling of being untethered. And what does it mean to really be untethered? We have this sense that we're disconnected. We often say, I feel blocked. I feel disconnected. I feel stuck. And these are feelings that we have within us, but that doesn't mean that there is a reality of being disconnected or stuck or blocked. It's my opinion that we are connected to source. We are connected to God. We are connected to one another. And it is because of that, that we're able to breathe the breath of life. So we cannot be connected and disconnected at the same time. I don't think it's possible to actually be here and be disconnected, but we feel like we're disconnected. And those feelings are attached to the wounded state that we bring along with us through our life. This is the reason for our emotional healing. This is why we show up 
to work through those old traumas and wounds and patterns and limited beliefs that we have inherited or we have experienced throughout our childhoods and our younger selves. To be in the unknown asks us to observe what is possible right then, what is possible now. We hold so much limitation for our growth for possibility, for opportunity, for manifestation. And it's these moments in between, if we can allow ourselves to face that inner discomfort, the fears of being untethered, the feelings of feeling disconnected or distrust of the unknown and step into the space to see what else is possible, then we have access to our higher selves. I wanna present this challenge to everyone and you can practice it today. Even if you're busy, and I understand we're busy, I want to challenge us all to practice being in the moments in between, to practice sitting in the stillness, to not engaging with your to-do list, to allowing moments to reveal themselves. When you pause and you enter this new state of aliveness and of awareness, the moment takes on a new meaning. In these times, we can check in with ourselves and just notice how do I really feel right now? Not how do I expect to feel, not how I have felt all week or all day, or not how I should feel because X, Y, Z happened yesterday or 20 years ago, but how do you really feel right now? What is the energy of this moment? How is it different than the energies that I experienced when I woke up today? And when we're in these moments, and when we're feeling in the flow, sometimes we notice that energy percolates within us. These little sparks, this fire starts to build within us. That is the energy of creation. That is the energy of our passion and of our connection to source and all things. It is from that place that we can allow ourselves to express. In the curiosity of these moments, we can learn so much about what our inner selves need, our younger self, our child self, what they actually need in this moment to be nurtured, to be heard, to be seen, to be validated. I was recently talking about this need that we all have to feel seen and heard. It's a fundamental need that we have. And many of us did not experience that when we were younger or throughout our lives. We, we desire to be seen and heard from our partners, from our friends, from our colleagues, from the world. Yet we want to moderate how we are seen or heard. We're still filtering the experience we want other people to have of us. We're still filtering the experience that we want to have of ourselves because we don't trust our emotional state or our groundedness. We stay tethered to these old thoughts, patterns, and emotions. We stay tethered to the identity that we want to preserve because we're afraid to access and see who we really are and allow other people to see who we really are. But it's these moments that allows us to practice befriending ourselves. It allows us to practice expansion into what is possible. It allows us to play and, and to bring things up from the depths of our being that want to be expressed. It allows us to step out of the judgmental mind and into the curious mind. And this isn't something that's super easy to do because sometimes we have a lot to work through even to get to this state. But we can challenge ourselves to create these moments where we are not activating our to-do list. We are not in our masculine power and we're in a receptive state. And in this receptive state, we can listen. We can listen to our intuition. We can listen to the energies. We can listen to our emotions. We can listen to other people. We can tune in in a completely different frequency. It's truly like turning a radio dial. So busyness is one thing. Distraction is another thing. And avoidance of our fears is yet another. The fear of feeling untethered. Many of you might know that popular book by Michael Singer, The Untethered Soul, and it's definitely worth a read. And I think of this untethered soul as kind of a beautiful, large white horse, you know, just galloping through time and space as it's naturally meant to do. I think of the energy of the untethered soul as like the eagle soaring high in the clouds without an uh, end in sight. We are so connected to beginnings and endings, again, as a way of safety survival mechanism so that we know 
what to expect in time and space of our lives. And that regimented kind of black and white thinking often keeps us trapped. So if you're experiencing any of those feelings of self-sabotage or feeling stuck or repeating patterns and um, or feeling blocked, I want you to consider the truth that there is no block in front of you, that you can never be disconnected from source, and that the self-sabotage are feeling states that are going on within us from an entrapment of a system that we have put into place. But in between those things that we have to show up for, the obligations that we have to meet, and any routine that works for your health and wellness, what is possible? What is possible? And the truth is, it is all possible. A book, it's possible. A new way to function in your relationship is possible. The most amazing piece of artwork that you've ever made is possible. A feeling of peace and contentment in this moment is possible. Movement in your body like you've never moved before is possible. There's so much that's possible when we release the pegs that are tethering our spirit. In relation to my experience at the house, this was part of the work that really freed me. The communication with spirit was vitally important. And to have that kind of communication with spirit for myself, as well as for my clients and readings, it requires that I get into a state of complete flow and trust, of being able to listen without filtering, of being able to feel without judging, of being able to allow a story to unfold and continue to its resolution point without stopping it, and an ability to free expression, to really be seen in one's fullness. So that is my challenge for us this week. It's a practice I think that anyone can benefit from wherever you are on your spiritual journey or on your self-care path is to notice these spaces. Where can you allow an energy of nothingness, of the unknown, stillness, and the surrender to flow in the river of life? This is the end of season four. We will return very soon with season five, and I will continue to have guests on the show and deliver thought-provoking content, I hope, for you. And in the meantime, I too will be showing up of practicing this very thing, allowing more space, allowing more time to be in my spirit. Oh, and don't forget, if you're not following me already on social media, at Leah the Modern Sage, and for those who have read Overcoming Toxic Emotions, I thank you so much. It is available as an ebook. It's available on hardback and audio. I'd love for you to leave a review. It's also available in Poland, France, and Russia. So if you know anyone in those areas, um, please encourage them to pick up a copy as well. I hope you take good care, and I will see you next time on the Modern Sage Podcast. 